Okay, so let's try to draw um, all the various isomers here and see what types of isomers we have for this compound. Or this uh, complex ion. What's the geometry here? Uh, octahedral. Right, because what's the coordination number? Six. Yeah. We don't need to bother figuring out the oxidation number here, but we need the coordination number. We're connected to one, two, three, four, five, six lightings. So I would draw that like this. Here's my suggested way of writing the uh, octahedral geometry. Um, using the wedges and the dashes to show the three-dimensional structure. Um, notice that it's basically square planar plus two extra bonds pointing above the square and below the square. So we can think of this octahedral structure as starting with the square planar that we had before, but now there's an additional ligand pointing straight up above the flat square, and there's an additional ligand pointing straight down below the flat square as well. This is called octahedral because if you actually connected all the different corners, you would get an eight-sided eight figure. There's pictures of that in the textbook. Uh, it doesn't have eight corners, but it does have eight faces if you actually draw in all the sides. There's pictures of that in the textbook. But the important thing is just to see a square planar with two extra lines pointing up and down. Now, um, so one way we can draw this is like this. That would be one compound. Now, I just want to point out here, and I think you guys basically had that, so that was good. Now, uh, I should point out that there's a way this is not realistic. Remember, this bond is not really pointing down. It's pointing towards you. And this isn't pointing up. It's pointing away from you. If I was going to draw this really realistically, realistically, you wouldn't be able to see these back ammonias because they would be blocked by the front ammonias. Because realistically, this black back ammonia is directly behind the front ammonia. It's not really above it. Um, so this would be a more realistic picture of what you would really see here if you were looking at this directly from the side. Well, obviously, we don't draw it completely realistically because we want to draw everything that's connected. But it's good to know in the back of your mind, these don't really represent upward and downward bonds. Um, realistically, this would be pointing straight to the left, but out towards you. And this would be pointing straight to the left, but away from you. So I try to put these at fairly shallow angles. It's probably better not to draw them at steep angles, because that kind of confuses us into thinking, them, into thinking that this is actually an upward bond, and this is a downward bond. OK, um, now would we call this cis or trans? Trans. trans. For me, the easiest way to see that is, what's the bond angle between these two chlorines? 180. That 180 bond angle is the clearest way for me to see this as trans. I think both of you saw that we also had cis pictures. Here 
here's another picture. Would this be scissor trans? And the easiest way to see that is, what's the bond angle between this chlorine and this chlorine? 90? Yeah, that's a little hard to see, but this really is a 90 degree bond angle here. If there's any optical isomer activity, well, for that, I need to draw a mirror image. What's the relationship between these two pictures? Yeah, that's right. It's obvious they're identical because even the original picture of the mirror image looked identical. So does this compound have an optical isomer? No, because it's identical to its mirror image. So now I'm going to cross this out because it's just a redundant picture. It's the same as this one. Now we have to try this one. that are close to the mirror on one side should be close to the mirror in its mirror image. And the ligands that are far from the mirror should be far from the mirror in the mirror image. That's the way mirrors work. Are these identical or different? They're identical. You could put that over on these sides. No. Wait, no. Sorry, I'm looking at that like... Identical? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's right. How can you yeah. tell? Because when you when you do them, like the the top port, like the corns and the ammonia's flip, like when you do the mirror image. However, if you rotate it, they all match. Rotate which way? Like this way. Okay. Yeah, that's right. So the rotation I'm thinking about is. So this chlorine is already in a good position to overlap with this, and this pneumonia is in a good position. The problem is this chlorine here does not seem to be in the right position. So it seems like I should rotate it 90 degrees in this direction. And then this chlorine would be in the same position as this, and then the ammonias would also be in the right positions to overlap as well, wouldn't they? All right, so does this have any optical isomers? No, so we only got two isomers here total. By the way, the pictures that you draw of the, drew of these might not have looked the same originally as mine. There's many different ways you can draw this, right? Because there's many different angles you could look at it from. Um, but as long as you drew one cis and one trans, you would have the right answer uh, in this case. There really was one cis and one trans. So there's a bunch of problems in the homework, I think, where they ask you to identify both optical and geometrical isomers for the same compound. And this is the general approach. It's pretty easy to think about the cis and the trans. But then off to the side, you, you have to try drawing the mirror images. Then you have to decide whether they're the same or different. So here we just have the two geometrical isomers.